to the legendary shoe ohio stadium where the third ranked team in the nation hits the field it's the minnesota golden gophers ready to take on the ohio state buckeyes hi everybody gus johnson along with my partner joe clatt and welcome to columbus where this ohio state team rolls in undefeated they're ranked number three they're led by their sensational sophomore quarterback dwayne haskins who just threw for 455 yards and six touchdowns against indiana yes. needless to say partner with dwayne wayne and qb it's a different world here at ohio state listen i We've had running quarterbacks at Ohio State generally in the Urban Meyer era outside of Cardell Jones going to win that national championship. But now we got the prototypical pocket passer. This is the one that the NFL guys are going to drool over in the years to come. He's got a great arm, great talent, understands the protections and the offense very well. 25 touchdowns, leads the nation. They've turned themselves into one of these high-flying, potent passing attacks, and it's because of Dwayne Haskins. Defensively, Ohio State's playing some good football on defense, but in order to beat the Alabamas, the Clemsons, the Georgias, the Oklahomas, yep. the maybe even Texases, they want to play a little bit better. They do, and they're going to need to. And part of it is that they're giving up too many big plays, but also the fact that they're trying to replace a superstar in Nick Bosa. And how do you do that? With another superstar. And I believe that player is Chase Young. A young defensive end is just a sophomore, but this guy has immense talent. Four sacks, seven tackles for loss on the season, including dominating Penn State late. The fourth down stop to get Ohio State that victory. Zach Anikstead, the quarterback, true freshman walk-on for Minnesota, is going to have to be aware of where Chase Young is each and every time they get into an obvious down situation. That's going to be a huge key for Minnesota today. This is a series that dates back to 1940. Ohio State leads it big, including winning 20 of the last 21 meetings here in Columbus. Big day for the Gophers. They've got a lot in front of them taking on an angry, aggressive, and a talented bunch of Brutus Buckeyes. One college football is sponsored by Dave and Buster's Eat, Drink, Play, and Watch Sports. Time now to join the third member of our team on the sideline, the All-American Girl, who's from Minnesota, by the way, <laughs> Jenny Taff. <laughs> Gus, you are right about that and something else about the Minnesota Gophers. They may be young, but as Coach Fleck likes to put it, they are planting the seed for future success. To be an elite program, you got to play against the best. He has been calling this week championship week. Today, they're going to be facing champions. They're going to see what they hit like, what they look like, what their stadium feels like. But another thing that the Gophers did this week, they watched some clips from the movie Miracle on Ice when in 1980, the U.S. men's hockey team shot the Soviet Union went on to win gold at the Olympics because hey he said if we're gonna see champions today we're also gonna see and know what an upset may look like all right Jenny thank you very much PJ Fleck 37 years old was a graduate assistant at Ohio State in 06 under Jim Trestle Ohio State won the toss deferred Minnesota ready to receive it Hobble sends it away Douglas Alton Bell of the deep men this one kicked into the end zone for a touchback. So here come the Gophers. They've lost two straight games last week against Iowa. High scoring affair. What do you see when you watch Minnesota? Well, let's start with their quarterback, Zach Anikstead. And he had three touchdowns last week in that loss to Iowa. That was a career high. I really like his skill set. Now, he is a true freshman. He is a walk on, but he had several offers. He wanted to be at Minnesota and he wanted to play for PJ Fleck. That's why he's here. He wins the job. He just needs to calm down a little bit, get more reps. The hard part is he's going to be facing a defense that gets after the quarterback in a big way. First down and 10 of the 25 for Minnesota. Mohamed Ibrahim in the backfield. They throw it near side. Ball caught Tyler Johnson, the junior. Very talented player with the reception as Isaiah Pryor brings him down. A gain of 13. Tyler Johnson, the junior, he's their best player offensively. They've been banged up. They've got a lot of running backs out. We'll get to their depth in a sec. But right now, you got to understand, Ohio State gives up big plays this year. That's been a huge Achilles heel for them. If I was Minnesota, I would go out there and attack the edges with the pass game. Here's the option. They pitch it. Ibrahim, first down runs into his own teammates and almost knocks him out. Tyler Johnson thrown under the chariot there, but another big gain of 15, so 13 and 15 on the first two plays for Minnesota. 
tell you, the outside linebacker, Pete Warner, just went into pass coverage. He had no run read there, and that's why the edge was so open for Minnesota. First down, Gophers at the 47. Give it to Ibrahim, and he is stuffed. TFL on the way here, a tackle for a loss at midfield. And leading the way, Pete Werner, first man to him. Now that time they kind of moved that defensive front, but this is the exact situation that Ohio State lives for, is when you get the opposition, what I would call off schedule. Gus, you get into that second and long territory, that's when you can have those big pass rushers pin their ears back, and get after the quarterback chase young he's one of the best in america the sophomore we talked about him in the open this guy is an absolute freak rushing the passer young with four sacks on the season second and 12 to the 49. this ball delivered down the field and intercepted by the buckeyes kendall sheffield camped under it and Ohio State forces an early turnover. I love what Sheffield does. Watch, he just is going to turn and he's going to run right away. He understands the technique and then he just plays the ball as if he's a wide receiver. That's a pass that as a quarterback you can't make. The wide receiver never gets even with the corner there. That ball's either got to go to the back shoulder or to someone else. You can't try to loft that ball down the field when the defensive back is in front of the wide receiver at all times. So a mistake from the true freshman, great technique from Kendall Sheffield. And when you talk about defense, Defensive backs, some of the best in the country are trained right here at Ohio State. Hey man, in the last three years, this is DBU. All respects to everybody else out there. This is where they are groomed. Haskins will throw it on first down up the sideline and incomplete. Austin Mack, the intended receiver. It's a different world, folks, with this man at quarterback, Dwayne Haskins. He originally is from Piscataway, New Jersey, played his high school football right outside of D.C. and Maryland. The first quarterback in Big Ten history to throw for five or more touchdowns in three games in the same season. This dude is going to shatter the single-season passing records here at Ohio State if he stays healthy. On the handoff, they give it to J.K. Dobbins. Dobbins, a sophomore now, rushed for 1,000 yards last year. Kamal Martin with the tackle for Minnesota. Well, what I think we're going to see, however, as great as they've been in the past game, they've been disappointed with the way they've been running the football. I wouldn't be surprised if Urban Meyer tries to set a tone for his team by establishing that run early, but it's not going to be on this play with an empty backfield. Five receivers, three at the top of your screen, third and seven of the 16. Haskins with time underneath, and it's caught by Matt. Turns it up first down. Buckeyes. So here's the big question that I asked you yesterday. Is Ohio State a running team or a passing team? Is this more like Oklahoma now? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Urban Meyer wants them to be both, and he'd like to establish the run. But here's the deal. Right now, they are one of the best passing teams in the country because of number seven. His arm talent is elite. His release is quick. He's accurate with the football. They've got great wide receivers, veteran group of wide receivers on the outside. On first down, they pitch it. Dobbins trying to get outside. And he's wrestled down as he crosses the 30-yard line by Blake Cashman. You had an opportunity to sit down with Haskins yesterday. He joined us for lunch at the Ohio State facility, and you had a chance to talk to him. It'll be interesting to tell the fans watching this game what your conversation was like. Well, it was a terrific conversation, first of all. And made me come away from that just believing in him even more, especially his mom. And they deliver McLaurin with the catch. That's a first down. When you first sat down with him, you always quiz quarterbacks. Well, you did it with J.T. Yeah. Barrett last year, but it's and really simple all stuff. The quarterbacks, all the quarterbacks I sit down with, and, and I just want to know, are these guys that are just out there and they're a piece of the system, or are they operating the system? Do they know what's going on? And Dwayne Haskins absolutely knows what's going on. Talk to him about protection. He knows what formations he likes the protections out of and exactly how he likes to protect himself. And he drops this one off. Rashad Barry picks up a first down for the Buckeyes. Opening series for Ohio State. They beat Indiana 49-26 here in Columbus last week. Haskins passed for career best 455, six TDs. And the Buckeyes pulled away after halftime. Off to a quick start now after forcing a turnover for Minnesota on their first series. First and 10, Haskins delivers, and that one knocked away. 
intended for Johnny Dixon. Getting a hand on it, Coney Durr. Yeah, that's just a great play by Coney Durr. Watch how he's just going to sit on the route, and then he's going to break right here. He breaks before the wide receiver is out of the route. He's watching the backfield. He's reading Haskins' eyes and does a great job of getting over the top without contact to knock it away. Second and 10 at the 49. Dobbins, the lone setback with Dwayne Haskins. Here comes a blitz. Ohio State picks it up. Haskins down the field. Inside the 10, and boy, does he throw a pretty ball. Oh, and it's, and it's out quick. He's got a strong arm, and he understood that he had a matchup that was advantageous for the Buckeyes and took advantage. K.J. Hill is a heck of a player, had the big touchdown late against Penn State, and there he just beats his man straight on what I would call an inside fade. That means he's going to run a fade route from the slot, the inside receiver position. He won right away, and Haskins put it on. That's a gain of 42, first and goal to the nine. Ohio State running the football with J.K. Dobbins. Dobbins set the Ohio State single game and single season freshman rushing record last year when he ran for 1,400. Highlighted by a 181-yard performance against Indiana in his first college game. He's from LaGrange, Texas. Second and goal to five. Haskins looking all day to throw. Steps up in the pocket and he's hit from behind almost coughed it up i think that ball did come loose it's just a matter of if it bounced right back to him i think it did carter coughlin with the tackle yeah and coughlin's one of these guys that he is just productive five sacks on the year but that advantageous bounce right back to haskins and he's able to fall on the ball look at that just bounced right back into his chest good effort there by carter coughlin third down goal the four, Haskins, does it, incomplete, Austin Mack just couldn't hold on to it, tight window for Haskins, and the Buckeyes will be forced to settle for a field goal attempt. This is all about the coverage, because the ball was accurate, it was on time, and it was a decent route, but watch Coney Durr, second time in this first series, that he gets his hands on a wide receiver, and then he's able to break across without contact and get to the ball to bat it away. Excellent series for the sophomore from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Sean Nuremberger comes in to attempt a 21-yard field goal. He's the Big Ten record holder with 216 consecutive made extra points, and that's almost like an extra point there. Ohio State on the board. They settle for three against Minnesota here in Columbus. Back after this. And sounds of Go RV here on the beautiful campus of Ohio State. This is one of the best ones, man. This is it. This, I mean, this is one of the meccas. There's a few out there, but this is this is one of them. You step into the shoe and you know it's it's all about college football, man. Stand up here right before we go on air and just watch them do script Ohio. Watch them dot the I. It's so good. I saw the uh, clip of the Ohio State band with a Michael Jackson thing. Whoa. Well, fair catch. Fair catch there. Minnesota, Ohio State Gophers with the football right after this. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Edward Jones because understanding what's important to you matters. Joe Thomas Barrett. JT Barrett here to watch his team play. And Michael Thomas with the Saints as well as Jamarco Jones with the Seattle Seahawks. All coming back to watch the Buckeyes and the Gophers. First down to 10 of the 25 for Minnesota. Bryce Williams in the game and running back. With Anikstad and this ball thrown to the near side. Complete to Bateman. And Bateman catching that one in front of Damon Arnett. Yeah, interesting there because he, he, they gave him the catch, but then he definitely fumbled that ball. He fumbled it out of bounds. But Anikstead, he's been struggling a little bit in his last couple of games. He's started off really well. You know, the first three games of the season, four touchdowns, zero interceptions. Since then, he's thrown five picks, one of those coming today. But they're going to 
at a little bit of a different look here. They've been doing this with Seth Green at quarterback, the Wildcat, trying to get their run game going a little bit. Seth Green, number 17. The Wildcat quarterback, as you mentioned, partner. And he hands it off. Ibrahim. And Ibrahim wrestled down by Arnett. And Seth Green is a wide receiver now, but he was a quarterback when he started his career at Minnesota. And so now they brought him back in order to try to get some of that athletic element into their offense from the quarterback position. He was a teammate with Oklahoma's Kyler Murray at Allen High School. Third down to three of the 32. Anikstad back in the game. He was 17 of 33 for 218 yards, three touchdowns, three picks last week against Iowa at home. Face with the third and three at the 32. And Minnesota needs a timeout here. Timeout. timeout. Minnesota. First of the first of the half. It'll be a 37. It'll be a full charge. Timeout. 7:52 to go. Back after this. And continues today with game two of the NLCS. Manny Machado leads the Dodgers as they face Christian Yelich and the Brewers. Game two today at 3.30 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. I remember as a kid watching the Brewers. And they had Paul Molitor, Robin Young. Robin Young was a shortstop back then. They moved him to outfield later. Third and three at the 32. For Minnesota. And they stay on the ground and pick up the first down. Ibrahim with a lot of running room. And he will get all the way to the Ohio State 41. A 25-yard gain. Sean Wade with the tackle. And this is really all about patience. He's just going to find his way right up the gut. Watch how that hole pops open, and then he's gone into the secondary. And up on that safety very quickly. Great run, but it all started with the patience to allow the offensive line to get up to that linebacker, get him blocked, and let the hole open up. Mohamed Ibrahim, a freshman from Olney, Maryland. First and 10 at the 43. Picked off again. Isaiah Pryor had two hands on the football. That one sailing a bit high for Zach Anikstad. And Anikstad had to adjust the way he was going to throw this ball because of Chase Young. He was in the backfield. He was the player that they were reading on that little zone read fake. But Chase Young was right in his face, and he was forcing Anikstad to throw it higher than he wanted to. Anikstad's just fortunate that ball wasn't picked off. Second and 10 of the 43. Get close to the first down prior with the tackle, but it's a gain of nine. And right now, Minnesota having no problems moving the ball against the Buckeyes. Yeah, and what's interesting is, is Ohio State is in a little bit different coverage than they normally run. Gophers quickly to the line of scrimmage. They throw it out to the far side. Johnson with the catch, and he picks up the first down. Ohio well, State is a little out of sorts here. And what I was talking about on that last play, Gus, they had two safeties back, and they were not in their traditional single safety man coverage look. See, anytime you've got two safeties deep in the field, what that's going to mean is that you can block everybody in the run front. So the offense has run ratios. Urban Meyer thinking that his front's going to hold up against that run, but the problem is Minnesota's offensive line is doing a nice job getting those defensive linemen of the Buckeyes blocked up. First and 10 at the 32. Now you're going to see the safety down. Jordan Fuller, number four, started to creep down, and Minnesota's going to take a timeout. Timeout. Minnesota. Second timeout second already half. called by the Gophers with 6.04 remaining in the first quarter. Let's go to Mike Hill, Sergeant Mike Hill, for a Dave and Buster's game break. All right, Captain. Bandy, Florida, after a goal line pick, the doors cash it in. Marching 98 yards, capped by this Kyle Sherman, one-yard strike to Jared Pinckney, making it 7-0 Bandy in the first. Of course, the Gators coming off that big win against LSU last week, trying to avoid the letdown in Nashville, where they haven't lost in 30 years. Gus, Joe. Mike Hill, retired sergeant in the United States Navy. 
604 to play. First quarter, three to nothing. Ohio State, Gophers threatening. Before to go first quarter. Ohio State with the lead, but Minnesota with the ball. First down and 10 at the Ohio State 32. This one, near side, and it's caught. Bryce Williams first down. Gophers, as they get out of bounds, Jordan Fuller knocking Williams out of bounds, a gain of 14. I got, they got caught here. Tough Borland was in man coverage, and he was straight picked by the outside receiver. The outside receiver for Minnesota came down and just drilled Tough Borland. That's why running back out of the backfield, Bryce Williams was wide open. Seth Green now comes in as the Wildcat quarterback. Ibrahim in the backfield with him. Green has five of the team's six rushing touchdowns, despite just 28 carries on the season. First down. And he runs it over the right side. Seth Green picks up seven, maybe eight yards on the play. Well, you got to have high discipline against this type of deal. Watch Tough Borland. Tough Borland is going to be the linebacker right here. He's just going to take off to the wrong side, number 32, and he vacates a gap, and that's exactly where Green heads. There's nowhere even for the right tackle, Daniel Falele, the true freshman. There's no one for him to even block. Second down and two at the 10-yard line. Seth Green remains in the game. Runs it again, first down, crushes his way forward and gets inside the Ohio State five. What makes this place so hard to defend when Green comes in at 6'4", 240? Well, it's it's all about math, right? I talked about the run ratios. Do you have enough guys to block all of their defenders? And when you run the quarterback, you gain an extra hat. Urban Meyer knows it. He's taken advantage of that for years with his running quarterbacks. I'm surprised Ohio State is defending the pass as much. They haven't passed out of this. Annex that is out of there. You got to put all those defenders. You got to put nine, ten defenders in the run box right now because this is going to be a run. Seth Green runs it again, and he'll cross the line of scrimmage. Jordan Fuller with the tackle, and on this drive, offensively, the Gophers are playing some good defense because they're keeping that. Ohio State offense on the sideline. They're doing it with the run game, and Jordan Fuller, the safety, he's going to come up, and he goes low, gets Green onto the ground. And Green was shaken up, and he's still on the ground now, and they're going to attend to him, and B.J. Flex got to be happy with this series, and he's got to be happy with the fact that they are physical up front, and they're running the ball extremely well at this Ohio State defense, which, candidly, right now, looks like they're sleepwalking a little bit. This defense is not fast right now. They haven't been all that physical. They've been out of position. They haven't had great discipline with their eyes. And outside of the gift from Annexted, the interception that Kendall Sheffield was able to get, Minnesota has kind of marched the ball down the field a couple of times. So this is a meeting right now on the sideline for Ohio State that is not about the scheme, but about the effort. And Green will trot off the field. Hopefully he's fine. Looks like he'll be coming back into the game. P.J. Fleck. Talented young coach, 37 years old, only in his second season in Minnesota. Eight and nine overall, his sixth season as a head coach. He was 30 and 22 at Western Michigan. Second down and goal at the one. 11th play of the drive that started at the Minnesota 25. Ibrahim back in the game. Anikstad as well. They give it to Ibrahim. Touchdown, Gophers. How about this? Minnesota imposing their will on the Ohio State defense on their second series of the game to take a 6-3 to three lead. How about Colton Beebe? Watch this block as he's going to come down and he's going to block to the inside. He gets the outside linebacker right there. Bang! And he's able to get him. That opens up the hole. And then Isaiah Pryor, number 12, is just a little bit late filling in. Ibrahim does a great job of getting behind that block, getting over the goal line. What a great drive. Emmett Carpenter, extra point. Good. Minnesota goes on an 11 play, 75-yard drive. They hold it for five minutes and 19 seconds and pay it off with a touchdown, 7-3. to three. Gophers.
Emmett Ibrahim ran for 101 yards on just nine carries in their season opener against New Mexico State. Now he has a touchdown here in the first quarter to give Minnesota a 7-3 lead over the number three team in the nation. Great confidence builder for the Gophers. Johnny Dixon, the deep man, and lets this one go into the end zone for a touchback. So we'll stay right here as Dwayne Haskins comes back on the field. We told you P.J. Fleck was a graduate assistant here at Ohio State in 2006 under Jim Trestle, followed by assistant jobs at Northern Illinois Rutgers with current and former Rutgers head coach Greg Schiano, who's now the defensive coordinator here at Ohio State. He also served with Coach Schiano with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There he is. Yeah, has, has a great amount of respect for what Greg has, has done in his career and the defense that he's built, but I got to tell you, they just took it straight to that defense on that last series. All first down, Buckeyes running the ball with Mike Weber. Flag on the play. Weber's been facing some foot sprains, so he's been banged up this year. Trying to get to 100%. Say he's close right now. Was a nice run by Weber and there's Personal foul. the face, face mask. mask. That, there we go. Defense. That's the call. Number 97. 15 yard penalty. Be added on the end of the run. First down. It's so hard to see from up here, but a great angle there from our camera crew. Just does a sensational job week in, week out. Had amazing shots last week at the Cotton Bowl for the Red River rivalry. And doing it again this week. And those drives, Gus, that, that open up with a penalty, when you get some of those free yards, the momentum it creates for an offense is outstanding. And I always love to take a little bit of a shot right after those plays and get the ball down the field, potentially get a big one on the defense. Johnny Dixon, the receiver, in motion. They give it to him on the jet sweep, and Dixon gains a yard maybe on the play. Well defended by Minnesota. As Thomas Barber, middle linebacker, comes up and makes the hit. Yeah, great play by Thomas Barber, who understood exactly the look and the motion that he was getting, and he was out there quickly. Weber in running back now. Haskins underneath, and it's caught by Johnny Dixon. You know, candidly, the only time that Ohio State looks like they're in sequence is when they're throwing the football. The defense has not looked good so far. The run game has not been great so far. It's only been Haskins in that passing game that look like they're firing on all cylinders, and that's going to drive Urban Meyer absolutely nuts. He wants to be a balanced team. And I guarantee you this is one of those situations where he wants to run for a first down third and short. After the seven-yard gain, Buckeyes need two. Minnesota would love nothing more than to get off the field right here. Here's Haskins to throw it. Rose Haskins will not get the first down. So the Minnesota defense bottles up the receivers, and it looks like Ohio State will either be forced to punt or make a decision on fourth down here. It looks like Urban Meyer wants to go for this, and I think he's going to, which candidly makes me think that this is a spur-of-the-moment decision, because if you were going to go for it on fourth down, you probably would have run it on third down, because two runs probably get the job done. So a bit of an emotional decision right here, wanting his offense to make a play. Fourth down and two, Weber in the backfield. They give it to him over the right side, and he adds close. Looks like the dive at the end may have gotten it for him, and Weber comes up limping. Remember, he's been struggling with foot sprains. Yeah, and Weber does a great job. Watch here. Defender goes low, and he's able to just keep himself up. Boy, that's going to be awful close. I don't think he got there. Man, that is a close spot. They give him the first down, but... Looks like the replay officials. Well, they got flags here because of a substitution issue with Minnesota as well. So a lot going on here. I would not be surprised if they took another look at that spot. But they're discussing right now the fact that Minnesota was having a bit of an issue there with their substitutions. I'm sure there's no foul for an eagle substitution since the offense sub, the defense is allowed to make a substitution and they were still in the process. First down. All right, so, boy, I got to tell you, one more look at this, and he needed to get all the way there to that fort. Boy, that was awful close, and he was doing a great job, Weber was, extending that football, but I'm a bit surprised that they're not going to take another look. First down, Haskins drops back. The last 
last time Ohio State won a national championship, they had a kid by the name of Cardell Jones that threw it like Haskins. I tell you what, this is all about the tight end taking the safety and creating space for the outside wide receiver. And Terry McLaurin does an unbelievable job of adjusting back to that football and getting the big catch in the end zone. So Blake Hobble comes in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. 10-7. Ohio State. Dwayne Haskins. Pitch and catch. McLaurin brings it down. The Buckeyes take the lead. Answering Minnesota with a six-play, 75-yard drive, eating up two minutes and 37 seconds. Again, it was all in the pass game. And granted, it's a great passing game. There's no doubt. But when you're having expectations of winning a national championship, they're going to fair catch this one again. Good strategy there from Minnesota. And you can help people affected by Hurricane Michael. Donate today by going to redcross.org or text Michael to 90999. That's 90999 to give $10 to American Red Cross Hurricane Relief. I'm looking at what Alabama's doing now. Well, down that's, there what, now. that's what I'm saying, right? Like, if, if your expectations are national championships, at, to some extent, you're not playing your opponent, you're playing yourself and your potential. And, and the fact of the matter is, as great as Ohio State is, is throwing the football, and they're one of the best in America. They're still running the ball for under four yards a carry now, and that would be the third straight week if that continued during the course of this game. And it's that hit as he throws Tyler Johnson. Another big gain as he crosses into Ohio State territory. Kendall Sheffield knocks him out of bounds after a 29-yard pickup. And you see some of these big plays being made against Ohio State this year at a much greater clip than we've seen in the past. And a big re reason for that is, as Greg Schiano told us yesterday, their lack of ability to ground. Tyler Johnson, three catches, 43 yards already. 30 seconds to go in the first quarter, first down. And it's that, that one deflected at the line of scrimmage by Justin Hilliard. Well, Hilliard is a heck of a player. He's a junior that has missed a lot of time over the last couple of years with injuries. But he's starting to come on. And this guy is a former five-star recruit that's got all the talent in the world and does a great job there at getting up and batting that ball down. P.J. Fleck wants Zach Anastad to do a better job of using his eyes because the defenders right now are watching his eyes and extend like a lot of young quarterbacks telegraphing where he wants to go with the ball based on where he's looking. Second down and 10 of the 46. Ibrahim cuts it back inside and is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. And that could take us to the end of the first quarter. Chase Young defensively for the Bucks. Coach Fleck says, relax, calm down. We'll head into the second quarter. A good one for Minnesota, down by only three. 10-7, Buckeyes back for the second after this. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Dave and Buster's Eat, Drink, Play, and Watch Sports. Good one here after the first quarter. Ohio State, third-ranked team in the country with only a 10-7 lead over Minnesota. Gus Johnson, along with my partner, Joe Klatt. J.K., what do you see so far? I see that you're struggling a little bit with the cold weather. <laughs> hey, man, I'm from the Midwest. Oh, you knew you were This prepared. is the Midwest. Hey. Don't be cute when you come to the Midwest. Listen, I'm, I'm acting you. tough right now. Guess what I got in my pockets? I got the hand warmers right now. <laughs> Oh, we'll go out and get you some gloves at halftime. Ginny is rolling her eyes right now, both of us. She's the toughest one of our group. So what do you see so far, Parker? Well, I see that this defense for Ohio State, they're continuing to struggle where they have struggled over the last few weeks, and namely that is in the first half. They have not been great. They gave up a lot of yards, eight yards per play last week to Indiana. They gave up 239 pass yards in the first half, and they're struggling again here in the first half. And it's that rolling out of the pocket, just delivers and incomplete, but a flag on the play. Looks like this will go against Ohio State. Tyler Johnson has had his way with the Buckeye defense. So far, Sean Wade defensively. 
for Ohio State. Yeah, so Sean Wade is in great position early. Watch out. He's right there. He's in man coverage. He's right there. And then right here, all he needs to do is turn around and, and avoid contact. It's not always just about turning around, but avoiding the contact there as Minnesota's trying to come back for that ball. Pass interference. Defense, number 24. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Cristiano hot. The defensive coordinator on the Ohio State sideline. Tyler Johnson's trying to adjust to that ball and had nowhere to go. So he was completely interfered, had no ability to get back to that underthrown ball. This is Sean Wade's job to avoid that contact, try to go for the catch point. First down and 10 at the 31 for the Gophers. Ibrahim in the backfield. that underneath caught again Tyler Johnson first down Minnesota tell you what I like what I'm seeing from Zach and it's that well first of all what you're gonna get here is that Minnesota is gonna run right in front of the safety right there and the safety does a poor job of keeping inside leverage he needs to probably keep inside leverage there and prior allows that wide receiver to run right across his face even though there was a blitz coming in front of him that's the vacated area and Minnesota did a great job of exploiting that vacated area so they bring Seth Green back in as the Wildcat quarterback or the short yardage quarterback, first down and 10 at the 18. Anikstad lines up as a receiver at the bottom of your screen. And Green running at this time, not a lot of success. Ohio State prepared for that one. Borland in the middle of the pile for the Bucks. And they're going to have to throw the ball out of that look. You cannot be 100% run. At, at some point, Ohio State will just commit all their resources. When Anikstead goes out to wide receiver, at this point, it's like, why even cover him? Because all they've shown is the ability to just run that little zone read, and you're going to get all the resources to stop that run game, which is what you had there on that last play from Ohio State. Gain of one, second and nine of the 17. You like the way Minnesota's competing early in this game. Love the way they're competing, especially up front. Those offensive linemen, one of them a true freshman, doing a great job. Max that underneath. Incomplete. Tyler Johnson had a step. Zach just couldn't put it on. It's 1980 when Tim, Tim Salem did it. Just had a little pressure there from Tough Borland right in his face. Forced him to throw a little bit high. Third down and nine of the 17-yard line. Attic step with time again. Same route, different result. Tyler Johnson first down. Gophers on third and nine. Minnesota gets 12 as Anikstad put that one on the money in front of Sean Wade. And look at Tyler Johnson. He's just so perfect in his route because he gets the outside move, allows Sean Wade to bite to the outside, and then he comes back inside, creates the space, and Anikstad threw a nice, accurate pass there. And the great conversion from Minnesota. They are playing some really good football right now on the offensive side. Tyler Johnson, five catches, 69 yards. Seth Green back in at quarterback. And Green runs it with a blocker and a dive forward to get to the two-yard line. Jordan Fuller with the tackle. I would run the exact same play and just slip Colton Beebe, number 44, right past the linebackers. And then you got the Tim Tebow jump pass effect. Fake the run, jump up, and it's an easy touchdown. That's all they have to do. There is six point. There is a free six points for Minnesota right now, if that's what they call. We saw it last week with little Jordan Humphrey and Colin Johnson, Texas, Oklahoma. Second and goal at the three. Remember, Seth Green is 6'4. This time he hands it off. Ibrahim, touchdown again. Gophers, his second of the first half. And Minnesota with a chance to take a 14 to 10 lead here at Columbus. The movement that offensive line is getting is extraordinary. Watch all these guys. They got 
guard, tackle, tight end, extra fullback in the game, and the push all the way back into the lap of the safeties, and they just have nowhere to go. Their heels are on the goal line. The running back, Ibrahim, lowers his pads. What a great drive for Minnesota. Extra point, good. Nine play, 75-yard drive for Minnesota. They eat up 414. Mohamed Ibrahim with his second rushing touchdown of the first half. And P.J. Flex says, let's row the boat, baby. We're playing in Columbus. These Minnesota offensive linemen are moving people in the first half. And they've run 18 plays so far in Ohio State territory. They, I mean, over five yards per rush. They're doing a heck of a job. And see big 78 there on the left, left side of your screen? That's Daniel Falele. He's a true freshman. Gus, 6'9", 400 pounds. <laughs> What? He's from what? Melbourne, Australia. What? He's an Aussie. He's played one year of football. He did it at IMG Academy. Comes up to Minnesota, and he's been playing really well so far today. All right, let's go to Mike Hill once again in Los Angeles for Dave and Buster's game break. That's a big kid, Vandy trying to get a big win. They haven't beaten Florida at home in 30 years. We're putting it on the Gators early, already up 7-3. It's Kyle Shermer to Keyshawn Vaughn on the screen. And the kid they call the Red Mamba, the Nashville native, does the rest. 75 yards to the house, and the doors in control. 14-3 in the second. Gus, Joe. I mean, what are, the, what are those, what are they going to say now? You know, they're always saying, the you know, Wow, that must mean Vandy is supposed to be ranked? Well, the SEC always has excuses. Here's J.K. Dobbins. This is the only problem I have with the SEC. Great conference, Alabama best team in football. Yep, no doubt. I was watching the 85 Bears documentary on the plane with Wilbur Marshall, Otis Wilson, and all the great players. I'd love to see Alabama and the SEC come up and play in Columbus or East Lansing or Chicago in the winter. Haskins. Steps up in the pocket. Haskins with the first down as he gets down and hit late. That's a flag. Yeah, there's no doubt that's a flag. He did slide a little late, but the problem also for Coney Durr is he's going to go in and against the defenseless player, he's going to go to the head or neck area. He also goes with the crown of the helmet. Remember, he's going to be down right when he starts the slide, so he's down right there. Edge and then the play. Personal foul. Defense. Number 90. With targeting, the play's under further review. Yeah, there's no doubt. That's textbook targeting. This is going to stand up. Haskins is giving himself up, and Durr not only goes with contact to the head or neck area, forcible in this case, but he also has that head down. Now, he didn't necessarily make clean contact with the crown, but that crown is down. I would be shocked if they overturned this. I thought it was the correct call. All right, Mike Pereira, our rules analyst, joins us now from Los Angeles. Mike, your thoughts on this play? Hey, guys, I certainly agree with Joel here. And the key is also that, as Joel said, the play is over when he starts to break down. And if you're going to get helmet contact, any type of helmet contact, that's going to be a foul. The issue of leading with the helmet certainly appeared that he did here. So I, like Joel, would be very surprised if they turned this into not a targeting foul. Tony Durr, who has played so well in that first series, he had a couple of pass breakups. He was the only reason that he kept Ohio State out of that end zone. There's that contact right to the face of Dwayne Haskins. And Coney Durr, the sophomore from Baton Rouge, unfortunately for Minnesota, I'm going to be really surprised if he remains in this ballgame. You can't have it. Here comes the call. Going on the field of targeting against number 16 of Minnesota has been confirmed. Number 16 has been disqualified from the game. Mike, your further thoughts? Yeah, yeah, yeah I certainly agree with the call. We're looking at it here too. Remember that as the player goes to the ground, he is a, he's considered defenseless at that point as soon as he starts to break down. And so the whole issue of targeting expands. So even shoulder to the head makes it foul. And some people were talking about that, but it clearly is targeting. So Coney Durr has been ejected from the game. Thank you, Mike. First and 10 of the 49 
for Ohio State. Haskins pulls it out, throws quickly, and it's caught by Paris Campbell. Campbell will pick up the first down as he's knocked out of play inside the 40. Paris Campbell is one of those guys, every time he touches the ball, whether I'm watching them live, whether I'm watching film, whether I'm here in the stadium, when he touches the ball, I kind of hold my breath. I'm like, you get the sense that he may take it the distance. An elite track athlete, he's got great ability after the catch. Yeah, against Indiana last week, a career-high nine catches for 142 yards. Hoskins underneath, and this time Campbell just can't hold on to it. But this kid has had seven or more catches in each of the last three games. That ball, that's actually a really tough catch because of the way that he's running. You're actually running at the quarterback more than anything. And so that ball and the velocity is ratcheted up a little bit. That's why when you've got inside breaking routes as a quarterback, you've got to put the ball down on the frame because when they reach up like that, now certainly it should have been caught. I'm nitpicking on Haskins here. It should have hit him in the chest. Haskins hands it off in Minnesota ready. J.K. Dobbins stood up and driven backwards. Remember, Mike Weber went out limping and he has not returned since. And this is a great duo. It's not like they've got, you know, it's one and one A, one A, one B here at Ohio State. With J.K. Dobbins and Mike Weber, and now Dobbins will likely get the bulk of the carries here moving forward, but they're going to go empty and let their quarterback try to get this conversion. Third down and 11 at the 40. After the one-yard loss, Dwayne Haskins drops back throws but not enough for the first down it's caught by Campbell but this could be four down territory yeah, exactly. for Ohio State exactly because of that you gain enough yards where now it's a much more manageable situation at this field position why not go for it and, and quite frankly Urban Meyer is probably frustrated with the way his team is playing and he wants to see something out of them they'll get back into that empty set when I say empty that means no running backs in the backfield with the quarterback Fourth down and three after the eight-yard pickup. Haskins and a whistle. I'm going to get a timeout from Ohio State. Timeout. Ohio State. They're first of the half. It'll be a full charge. Timeout. 9.40 to go in the second quarter. Gophers up by four. To check out Breaking the Huddle with Joel Klatt on Facebook Live Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, sponsored by Dr. Pepper. talking about some upsets there's a few teams struggling today and as Ohio State goes for it on fourth down they've been stopped in a fourth and short each of the last three weeks Let's see if they can get this conversion fourth down and three Haskins to the sideline and they're gonna give him a catch it's KJ Hill who managed to hang on to that football. I mean, check out this ball. This is thrown with some serious velocity. Hill runs a great route. There's not a big window there. Maybe a little bit behind him, but how about the adjustment? Goes back, gets it on that right shoulder, and did he secure it before going out of bounds? Absolutely he did. What a catch on a fourth down for K.J. Hill, the junior from Little Rock, Little Rock Arkansas. Remember, he had that game-winning 24-yard touchdown pass from Dwayne Haskins to beat Penn State. Two games back, first down, Buckeyes at the 26. Haskins guns one near side, and it's caught by Benjamin Victor. Flag on the play as he gets out of bounds. You know, they might get an offensive face mask here, because as Victor started running this ball, first of all, he had the, the ball on the inside arm, and then he goes up to stiff arm with his left hand, and watch, he goes right to the face mask. Ineligible receiver, downfield, number 59. Five-yard penalty. First down. Well, I did not see that in particular on such a quick play. I find it would be very hard to get an offensive lineman downfield when we're running a hitch route. You don't have time to be downfield. Well, no, that's a good call. There he is right here. This is who they've got. That's 59 Isaiah Prince, the right tackle. First down to 15 at the 31. Haskins again over the middle, and they complete that one. Just dropped by Benjamin Victor. He may have taken his eyes off the ball momentarily. Buckeyes look out of sync yeah, on both really sides do. of the football. They really do. And 
just some mistakes. Not a lot of life in the stadium right now. Haskins 10 of 15, 147 in the touchdown. Second of 15 at the 31. Dobbins in the game. Haskins throws a slant and it's caught by KJ Hill. And he's taken down immediately by Kamal Martin. You know, what's, what's interesting here is that we've had Blake Hubble come in and kick, and he's just a sophomore. Sean Nuremberger is the normal kicker, and you wonder if Nuremberger's healthy. They didn't tell us anything. We asked, we about asked Coach kick. Meyer about his kickers yesterday. And, and he was he was raving about the kick game. You wonder if they're just trying to get the sophomore some opportunities, but they went for it on that last fourth down when a potential field goal opportunity. So I wonder if this is also four down territory because of some sort of kicking issue. Third and eight, Haskins. Over the middle, close to a first down. That one thrown right in the heart of the Minnesota defense. C.J. Saunders with the reception. It's a seven-yard gain. It looks like it's going to be a hair short, and again, Ohio State will stay on the field and go for it on fourth down. Under eight minutes to play. Fourth down and one at the 17. P.J. took a timeout over there on the far side. That's his final timeout of the first half. Timeout, Minnesota. That's her final charge, timeout of the half. Coming up on the State Farm halftime last weekend, Florida upset LSU. Could the Gators avoid an early kick upset in Nashville? Is this the day Scott Frost finally finds that elusive first W? And who really poses the biggest threat to the Buckeyes in the Big Ten? Gus Joel, see you at the break. All right, Stoner, thank you very much. 14 to 10, our score here in Columbus. Ohio, fa Ohio State faced with a fourth down and one at the 17. J.K. Dobbins in the backfield. Oh, this is not good. Ohio State needs a timeout, timeout. out of a Ohio timeout because they were in the it's wrong second formation. Be a 30 second Ooh, you talk about fire in the timeout. huddle right now. Watch out, boys. You better stay buckled up. Meanwhile, the story on the Ohio State place kicker is starting to get interesting. Here's Jenny Taft. Well, interesting because I've been watching both Nuremberger and Hubble on the sideline. Now, Nuremberger has been putting his helmet on and off. He looks like he's trying to stay involved, but the update is a minor injury, so I don't have anything more to report. And just talking to the team, no one knows what is up with him, but he is dealing with some kind of minor ailment right now, guys. Might be a big reason why they're going for it on these fourth downs, and also Urban just needs it. Oh, my goodness. And they will not get the first down on fourth down and one Minnesota another great defensive stand Blake Cashman first man to it they're just winning the line of scrimmage right now you watch they're in the backfield the right guard Demetrius Knox gets pushed right back into the backfield you've got Carter Coughlin in the backfield he's got six and a half tackles for loss on the season he's going to get another one right there what an unbelievable stand Blake Cashman the senior the captain six and a half tackles for loss also from him 6'2", 235 in the backfield. Urban Meyer hates it. That's another fourth down. That is four straight games for Ohio State where they have failed on a short yardage opportunity on fourth down. So the Buckeyes turn it over on downs. Minnesota first and 10 of the 18 with 7.30 to play. In the first half, leading 14 to 10. Ibrahim with two touchdowns in the first half. They give it to him. And what a play. First down. Mohamed Ibrahim still moving and he gets inside Ohio State territory Jordan Fuller chops him down after a gain of 34 what you're gonna see is just bad angles taken by Ohio State watch the safety right here he goes all the way into the middle field and just leaves a totally a vacated area they had hats for hats they got the numbers and then all of a sudden the big play happens because Jordan Fuller just kind of randomly roamed out of his area into a spot that was already covered up Ibrahim, nine carries, 86 yards, and two touchdowns. First and 10 of the 48. This time it's Williams. And Bryce Williams stopped by Tough Borland after a three-yard gain. 
Well, they inserted that big freshman, Daniel Fa'alele, because they wanted to get stronger. They wanted to get tougher up front. Fa'alele is one of the strongest guys on the team, even as a freshman. 6'9", 400 pounds. And trust me, it's not just him, but this is just the mentality that they want. Physical nature, own the line of scrimmage, and they've been able to do that on both sides of the ball. Second down and seven at the 45. Over the middle, and another reception, but it's knocked away, and looks like it's recovered by Okuda. And that will be the second turnover of the game. If it stands, shot away. Reception. Then it was fumbled, recovered by Ohio State. First and ten. There's Sean Wade. I don't know if he ever controls that ball. They'll obviously look at this again, but Tyler Johnson again on one of these inside breaking routes. Uh, we'll take a quick break, and we'll see if this one stands. Buckeyes need it badly. Well, as we were watching that last play, they did review this upstairs as Ohio State's looking for this turnover, and it does look like Tyler Johnson secures it in his hands, and he's making a football move before contact, and Sean Wade comes up, makes contact, Johnson puts it on the turf, and it's good, it's Ohio State ball. First down, Ohio State, Haskins throwing on the move, and he completes it at the 30-yard line to McLaurin. As he's stopped by Keandre Thomas. You know, Urban Meyer told us that they want to be more balanced moving forward. Well, so far they've got 11 rushes, 17 passes on the day. Second down and three. Weber back in the game now. Mike Weber, 80 yard on the play. They're just not opening up any holes up front. You know, they. And Weber is down. You know, it looks like their helmet mask, face masks are tangled. <laughs> it, does. it absolutely does. How often do you see that happen? Kamal Martin. Now you just wonder if there's any conversation down there. There we go. Now they're untangled. <laughs> At first, I thought Weber might be struggling with these foot sprains, you know, and down on the ground, but Kamal Martin, and he tangled up there. But again, this run game, so far today, 12 rushes, that was the 12th rush, 33 yards, that's 2.8 per carry for Ohio State against Minnesota. They have got to be better in the run game if they want to make a run here towards a championship. Third down and two, Haskins over the middle. And the first down for the Buckeyes, Rashad Berry. Nine-yard gain. And the reason is, and Urban Meyer knows this, as great as they are at throwing the football, and they're one of the best in the country, because you can't just throw it and win a national championship. Well, I mean, it's bread and butter going all the way back to Utah. It was the quarterback run game. Am I right in that regard? Yes. And a handoff to Weber. There's a big hole. And a first down. I know Cardell Jones came in, led him to a national championship in three games, aired it out against... Alabama and Oregon, but it just seems like that running quarterback has always been a staple for Coach Meyer. Yeah, and, and he would bristle a little bit and maybe get a little defensive and say, well, three of my, two of my three national championships were with pocket passers with, with Chris Leak and Cardell Jones, but obviously they had the element of quarterback run with Tim Tebow when they had Chris Leak, and they were forced into that position with Cardell Jones and no other options after Braxton Miller went down in camp. You had JT Barrett break his leg, and you had Zeke Elliott, one of the best running backs in college football. Haskins underneath Rock again, KJ Hill, first down Bucks. I mean, they can sling it around, can't they? Yes, they this, can. I tell you what, man, Dwayne Haskins, every time I watch him, I'm more impressed, and it makes a lot of sense because, Gus, he's not all that experienced. Only six games as a starter. So every time coming into this one, so this is his seventh game as a starter. Every time I see him now, it seems like he's better and better learning, continuing to get that development that he needs. Haskins. He didn't even go back with the second hand. 
once he had it secured with the one hand, he just tucked it away. Check this out. Bunch set, 14, wide open, perfect pass. He said, okay, I got that, and I'm gone. Extra point, good. I mean, this is a little sauce right here. Hey, boys, I got it. And now it's over. O-T-A. Hey. <laughs> oh, stuck. I can't get it. I can't, I can't get it off. <laughs> it's like that commercial. Oh. Oh, KJ, you're my new favorite. Man, I love it. <laughs> He's got to stick him on those hands. 17-14. What a first half. Got to be impressed with Minnesota, yes. the way they've competed. And you also have to shake your head a bit at, at the way Ohio State has played on both sides of the football. Outside of their ability to throw it. You know, the receivers and, and Dwayne Haskins have been the bright spot for Ohio State. And then K.J. Hill just throws a monumental amount of swagger at us on that last touchdown. Ohio State, though, with 10 points off two Minnesota turnovers. That was the fourth lead change of this game. That was like a Costco economy size jar of swagger from K.J. Hill. <laughs> This one brought out of the end zone. Douglas and a flag on the play. of different flags here. It was hard to sort out exactly what was going on. There's two fouls on the play, one by each team. Personal foul, face mask, number 25. And to the play, personal foul, off at, on Minnesota, number 80. First and 10 for Minnesota. are everything the teammates this wide receiver group such a close group <laughs> Dwayne ask is asking for a little of that swagger a little of that stick them oh my goodness that was so good and this is what it moving forward does a play like that get some life not only into the stadium but into the defense well we see this all of a sudden pick up for Ohio State after KJ Hill throw some electricity at us here in the shoe we we'll see right now with 355 to play in the second quarter Ibrahim will have something to say about it. Anikstad, first and ten of his own 14. Ibrahim, and another good run from Muhammad Ibrahim. Jordan Fuller, Pete Werner combining on the tackle after an eight-yard gain. And Ohio State dealing with a lot of injuries on that defensive front, including some of their defensive tacklers, Robert Landers, Devon Hamilton. Ibrahim again, first down, Gophers. Draymond Jones, their defensive end. Jonathan Cooper is out today. Malik Harrison, a linebacker, is out today. So they're trying to do this with their depth, which is one of the reasons why they're struggling up front right now. we got some younger guys, and they're a little bit lighter than they normally are. Jay Sean Cornell in there trying to get it done inside. First and 10 of the 26. Minnesota in no rush, trailing 17 to 14. Ibrahim following his blocks, and this time he's tracked down from behind Hilliard and Jay Sean Cornell. And remember, the biggest missing piece to this Ohio State team his is that man. His name is Bosa. Yeah, Nick Bosa is one of the best players in America, much less on, on this team. And, of course, that abdominal injury that he suffered against TCU. We'll see if we see him again in an Ohio State 
uniform but certainly not at full strength this defensive unit out here and struggling a little bit today second and nine of the 27. Abraham. And this time Chase Young snatches him down and says get out of here little guy. Chase Young, 6'5", 265, sophomore. That's what I love about Chase Young, right? He's trying to step up and be a bigger factor in the run game, and he is right there. Just one-handed, drags Ibrahim right back into the backfield after splitting those defenders and getting into a situation now where he can dominate. Third and long, Chase Young, one of the best pass rushers in the Big Ten. Third down and 10 of the 26. Gophers need to go to their own 36 for first down. Remember, Tyler Johnson, number six, has been their go-to receiver. Ibrahim, and he will not get the first down, but there is a flag on the play. Jordan Fuller with the tackle. Legal formation, offense, number 78, lined up in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, third down. Uh, Lele, the true freshman. And those are the mistakes that you just have to kind of live with as a youngster because you get a little bit too comfortable. You're trying to run that draw. You're inviting the pass set. They're talking about declining this. That's right. Time yeah. out. Ohio State, their final charge, time out of the half. Yeah, Urban ran out there and said, no, no, I don't want to accept that penalty. I want to decline it, get that punting unit on the field. So Jacob Herbers, the junior from Battle Creek, Michigan, comes on the punt for the first time for Minnesota. First year as the team's full-time punter. Also plays baseball for the Gophers. Thursday night, football returns. Next week is Von Miller and the Broncos batter battle Josh Rosen and the Cardinals. It all starts at 7.30 Eastern on Fox, NFL Network, and streaming on Prime Video. Josh Rosen finally get an opportunity to get in there and start as a quarterback as the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, and he's got to be licking his chops because Darnold just took it right to Denver last week. And in this ball game, Ohio State looking for a score here before the half, trying to extend this lead. K.J. Hill, the deep man. Hill from the 25, and goes down at the 20. Good special teams coverage by Minnesota. Coming up at the half, Rob Stone, Dave Wanstatt, Matt Leinard, and Robert Smith, the former Ohio State legend, Robert Smith, are standing by with the State Farm Halftime Show. I bet you Robert's going to be a little frustrated oh with this run boy, game for Ohio what. State. Especially with a couple of talented backs, right? I mean, a couple of years ago, Mike Weber, as a freshman, ran for over 1,000 yards. Last year, J.K. Dobbins set the Ohio State freshman record with 1,400 yards to rushing, and they just have not gotten it done. And a lot of that is the fact that they're missing some really quality offensive linemen from the last few years, namely a guy like that offline and Billy Price. Gets thrown in both teams out of timeouts as Paris Campbell makes the catch. Clock continues to run, 108 and counting. Campbell's unable to get out of bounds. Second down and seven. Haskins drops it off to Dobbins. And he does get out of bounds with 56 seconds to play in the first half. I think they're going to get helped out here by a Minnesota penalty in the backfield. Hands in the face. 15-yard penalty. will be added on to the end of the run. First down. And this, this was Carter Coughlin. He was working against Isaiah Prince over there on the right side and just got his right hand jammed right up into the face of Prince. Pretty easy call. Here it is over there on the right side. And watch as the head's going to go back right there, hand up into the chin area. The flag came out, and that's a huge boost inside of a minute now in great field position. First down to the 45. Haskins, short passes now. C.J. Saunders, that keeps the chains moving. Yeah, boy, with no timeouts, Gus, you got to throw that ball past the chains because now you, this is a lot of wasted time between plays. Haskins to the sideline. 
happens. Steps out of bounds. Doesn't pick up the first down. Stops the clock at 37 seconds. Yeah, probably more important there that he got out of bounds than necessarily picking up that first. So they can kind of reset themselves now. Remember, no timeouts, 37 seconds. If you're Dwayne Haskins, you can't take a sack, and you've got to get the ball down the field at least past the chains and get your guys ready to get up to that line of scrimmage and spike the ball. Third down and two. Haskins gives it up to J.K. Dobbins. He picks up the first down, and the clock will stop to mark the ball. My question is, what is the field goal range now with the kicking issue for Ohio State? Remember, Hubble's only attempt so far in college was earlier today. It was basically a chip shot. First and 10 at the 39. Boy, this is, this is not good efficiency from Ohio State offensively. If this is a false start, it's going to be a 10-second runoff as well. False start. Wow. Offense, number 59. My goodness. Five-yard penalty remains third down. There was no Clock reason operator. to try to call Please. the play after the first down. You just get everybody up and you spike the ball so that then you can get yourselves set up in there. Easy call there. Prince rocks back in his, in his set up. So now you're going to go down to seven seconds, and now it's just a Hail Mary. They had an opportunity here for points. And this was a mismanagement of the two-minute situation out of Ohio State. Seven seconds to go. First and 15. Haskins down the field and incomplete. Intended for Paris Campbell, and that's the end of the first half. Jacob Hoff defending. Not a great first half for Ohio State. Solid, though, for Minnesota on the road. 17 to 14, Buckeyes lead the Gophers at the break. Right now, we'll send you to Rock Stone in Los Angeles. Football is sponsored by Dave and Buster's. Eat, drink, play, and watch sports. Welcome back to Columbus, 17 to 14. Third ranked team in the nation being challenged as Minnesota. Great first half yep. for Minnesota, although they did turn it over yep. twice. But that's not the kind of football we're expected to. We were accustomed to yeah. watching from Ohio State. Yeah, it really wasn't. They couldn't run the ball. They couldn't stop the run on defense. And, and the only positive they had was Dwayne Haskins. You know, this first half, it unfolded with really just number seven being the guy for Ohio State. The beautiful ball to Terry McLaurin, but then the defense kind of gave it up. Right down the field, Minnesota went. They got into the end zone. It was the turnovers that ultimately is the three-point difference in this game. Ohio State got two of them. And it, this one led to the All-State mayhem moment, which was K.J. Hill with all sorts of swag on that one-handed grab and then he said I cannot get it out of my hand look at that it is stuck so Iowa State will have the football to start the second half KJ Hill walking back on the field see if the Buckeyes can do a better job of establishing the run. That's something Urban Meyer desperately wants to do. Yeah, in the last couple of games, they've averaged under four yards per carry for the game. They're doing it again today. They've run the ball 14 times for 52 yards, only 3.7 a rush. And yeah, let's check in with Jenny Taft. Well, guys, I did walk off the field with Urban to end that break. And to be honest, guys, not too happy with how it ended. You talk about running the football. I asked him, what can we do differently? Just those 52 yards rushing. His simple answer, more rushing Jenny. Now, a different demeanor from P.J. Fleck, who said this is all about the how for us. We put up 14 in the first half. We clean up our game, and we're playing against some really good five-star guys everywhere. I'm proud of what we're doing. I'm proud of where this team can go and we've got a lot more to prove in the second all right Jenny thank you very much first down and 10 of the 25 for Haskins and the Buckeyes he'll throw it on first down in trouble dances out of the pocket steps up and is finally chopped down by Cashman 
Today's first half stats are sponsored by David Buster's Eat, Drink, Play, and Watch Sports. I mean, again, you know, we've, we've hit on it all day. The rushing yards, 128 for Minnesota, 52 for Ohio State, 238 total yards for Minnesota. Very similar to what Indiana did last week in this building in the first half to Ohio State. By the way, in the second half, Indiana only gave under 90 yards. Mike Weber, and he will be tackled for a loss. Della Abodir with the tackle. Winston, a junior from Baltimore. And he just absolutely whipped Isaiah Prince on that last play. They were one-on-one, -on -one and Isaiah Prince, the right tackle, a senior, 6'7", 310 pounds, whiffed on the outside. And a lot of Badir was right there for the tackle for loss. So third down and four of the 31. Ohio State, three of seven on third down conversions. Empty backfield for Haskins. Haskins over the middle, and it's a first down. K.J. Hill. Another big grab, this time for 20. Just a mismatch there. They were trying to drop Carter Coughlin, the defensive end, back in coverage, and then he was responsible for that area where K.J. Hill is coming now. See right there? That's Coughlin. He can't match up against K.J. Hill. Easy pitch and catch for Dwayne Haskins. You can tell, man, Dwayne Haskins is comfortable, even in third down situations. He does. N he never goes too quickly. He goes through his drop back, sets up evenly, and delivers an accurate ball. This time he's in trouble and will be sacked. First sack of the day for Minnesota. Coughlin got into the backfield and dropped Dwayne Haskins. Well, here you go. Coughlin. First of all, that set is not very good. And Carter Coughlin, this guy's got five sacks coming into the game, now six. He was tied for the Big Ten lead with Iowa's Anthony Nelson. It made life difficult for his own quarterback against Minnesota last week. That's a loss of 10 yards on the play. Second and 20 at the 41. Haskins. Scrambling. Haskins again tackled. Okay, Maywu with the tackle as Haskins barely crossed the line of scrimmage. Here's what happens to a passing game when you start getting pressure with just the down linemen. You can drop everybody else in coverage, and it becomes very difficult to find the seam for a quarterback and for the wide receiver group. This offensive line has got to do a better job. They've been beaten in the run game, and now they're starting to get beaten in the pass game. Third down and 19, Haskins. Wants to let it rip once again. This time he decides to run and gets out of bounds. Well short of the first down, an 11-yard gain on third and 19. And again, Isaiah Prince on the right side is getting beat. He's got to all of a sudden get out of the pocket before he wants to. Coughlin was around the edge again. Carter Coughlin is doing a heck of a job right now on the outside. Check this out. He's just going to take off way up the field and get around Prince, and then he's going to force Haskins to get out of the pocket before he wants to. The pass concept can hardly set up because of that pass rush. Got to love what Minnesota's doing at the line of scrimmage. They're winning on both sides of the ball. First punt of the game for Drew Chrisman. Demetrius Douglas is the deep man. That's that will go over his head, and it's down at the one-yard line by the Buckeyes. McLaurin downs it. Minnesota backed up to start the second half, trailing here in Columbus. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. 17-14, Ohio State leading Minnesota. Gophers will get the football for the first time here in the second half. I tell you that, that band is special for Ohio State. Uh, always a pleasure to watch them at halftime and before the games. The stand band in the land. First and 10 at the one-yard line for Minnesota, Anikstad will operate out of his own end zone. Ibrahim. They'll give him a little breathing room as Jordan Fuller comes up with the tackle. This offense has been really good today. They came into this game averaging four, just over four and a half yards per play. 
today they're getting seven and a half yards per play. The 4.7 yards per play ranked 121st in college football coming in, and they have done an excellent job, and a lot of it has been that offensive line. They shuffled up the starting unit, brought in the true freshman Daniel Falele, and Extead has been pretty good, but it's been Ibrahim who's been really good. And he'll try to get back to the line of scrimmage, but will be stuffed and tackled for a loss. Looks like Borland, first man to him. Uh, this is exactly where you want to get Minnesota. Coming into today's ball game, they were two for 20 on third and five plus yards, 10 percent conversion rate in large part due to having a young quarterback. It's really tough to convert in particular when you're backed up right next to your own goal line. So this is when Ohio State would love to try to get that salty pass rush going and get his clock sped up in that end zone area. Gophers are three or four on third down conversions facing a third and five at their own six. And they stay on the ground and will not pick up the first down with Mohammed Ibrahim. Pete Werner brings him down and Gophers will be forced to punt it away on fourth and two. A good stop there from that Ohio State defense. They came to play on that possession, certainly, and you got to imagine that at halftime there was some serious fire going on when talking to that defensive line that did not play well in that first half. A.J. Hill standing right in the middle of the O at midfield. Herbers, second punt of the game. And Hill taken down immediately at the 45. Antonio Chenault with the tackle on special teams. Coming up, Dwayne Haskins and the Buckeyes with the football after this. <laughs> 2018 marks the 50th anniversary of Ohio State's 1968 National Championship team. The group was known as the Super Sophomores, which had 11 All-Americans on the team. Head coach Woody Hayes led the team to an 11-0 record, including wins over their rivals from up north at USC in the Rose Bowl. Jack Tatum played on that team. They beat that Southern California team led by O.J. Simpson. J.K. Dobbins, Woody Hayes won five national championships. As the head coach between 1954 and 70, Paul Brown won one, Jim Trussell won one, and Urban Meyer has won one as well as the head coach for Ohio State. Second and seven at midfield. Haskins, he wants to win one. Throws and it's caught. They get out of bounds. Paris Campbell, first down, Buckeyes. Boy, this wide receiver group is good, aren't they? They run clean routes. We haven't seen many drops. There was one drop by Campbell over the middle of the field today, but boy, they're, they're explosive. They're unselfish. Three of these guys are captains. They're the leaders of this club, and that's that's not something that's you can say about a lot of teams, their leaders being wide receivers. Haskins with 22 receptions to eight different receivers. That one thrown a bit high. And it was interesting. Now tell us about your conversation with Dwayne yesterday at lunch. Well, first and foremost, I just love listening to this guy and how he talks about his teammates one how he talks about the offense the structure of the offense he clearly understands protections he's getting better and better at checking into the right play checking into the right protection he is unfazed to throw the ball as many times as he wants i mean this guy he is so accurate i really enjoy talking with him i think he's going to be a sensational player throws it again comes it underneath in the first down paris campbell you know, he's artistic. He loves to draw. He won't show us any of his work, but he has a soft-spoken nature about himself, Joel, but an intellectual side as well. I'd yeah, say. He, he sure does, and, and that comes in that structure that I was talking about, you know, and understanding what he needs to do with the football. And you can tell by how quickly he gets the ball out that he understands where he wants to go with the ball at all times. First down, he'll throw it again. I'm trouble sack for the second time. Offensive line having some problems as Gibson comes up with the sack for Minnesota. Let's go downstairs to Jetty. 
Well, Gus, you mentioned JT Barrett was in attendance today, and no one's surprised by the success we are seeing from Dwayne Haskins. And he said something that he stood out. Uh, he said early on, I knew he could be a leader of this team. We knew he had the arm strength, but he said when you're a quarterback at Ohio State, the pressure is there, but it's the preparation that makes a difference. He said, I learned it from Braxton Miller. I tried to lead the way for Dwayne, and now I'm seeing him lead the offense, and it's so rewarding to see that pay off. He's All right, Jimmy, thank you very much. And he's certainly doing a great job. Of that. And they are Mumford, the left tackle for Ohio State down. 7.35 to play third quarter back after this. 17-14, Ohio State. As Dwayne Haskins, the young man from Piscataway, New Jersey, who went to high school right outside of Washington, D.C. in Maryland. And we saw video of him last year. As a kid, he was about 10 years old, visiting the Ohio State campus and facility, saying that one day he was going to be the quarterback of the Buckeyes. He is a Heisman Trophy candidate right now, dancing around the pocket, scrambles out, throws incomplete. Now, the one criticism, and it was a very mild criticism that uh, some of the coaches had of Dwayne, is that his, you know, at 21 years old, he turned 21 in May, and he's a little pudgy. <laughs> Well, listen, he didn't. He didn't lift weights seriously in high school. Didn't have to. Yeah, he didn't have to. He's been. He's been so talented. Let me tell you what. What will get you in the weight room real fast? Getting hit. <laughs> trust. Trust me on that. And he's been working real hard with their strength coach, Coach Mick. Done a, a really remarkable job transforming his body to this point, and that will just continue as his uh, as his career continues. Third down at 13. Looking for the first down. Incomplete. They won't get it. C.J. Saunders, the intended receiver. How about this Minnesota defense partner? Well, it's the pass rush. You know, that's that's the deal is Haskins was unable to get his feet set. He rushed himself for one of the first times today because they are constantly around him. And Joshua Allaby had to come in, number 58, at the tackle position. And both tackles for Ohio State are getting beat right now on a play-in, play-out basis. Now Blake Hobble comes in for Sean Nurenberger to attempt. 47-yard field goal, and perfect. Hobble kicked a 61-yarder in high school, and he gives Ohio State a 20-14 to advantage. Postcards from Fansville, sponsored by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. No better fans in all of college football than here in Columbus, Ohio, at the Ohio State University. They know their football here, and a lot has happened since their first season, their first game in 1890, that 64 to nothing loss to the University of Worcester. Fair caught at the five. And let's check in with Mike Hill for a game break. All right, Gus Auburn coming off that loss to Mississippi State last week, having issues again today against Tennessee. Jared Gerentano finds Juwan Jennings for the 25-yard score in the end zone. Balls with the 20-17 lead down on the plains in the third. Remember, Auburn trying to avoid his third loss in conference play. Gus, Joel. team not playing well. They haven't gained 330 total yards in their last three SEC games. Church Stidham only five touchdowns in six games. And here's a man who had a chance to be the head coach at uh, Tennessee. Yeah, he should have been until their fan base decided to have a mob rule. Uh, first down and Hanikstad. That is caught by Tyler Johnson. Can you give us a brief synopsis of that Cricciano Tennessee story? Well, the bottom line is this. Greg had an agreement to go be the, the University of Tennessee head coach. There was a sector of their fan base that didn't like it based on apparently Greg's track record at Rutgers and Tampa Bay. So they, because of that, conjured up an old story dating back to his time at Penn State and really tried to ruin his character, which didn't work with those of us that know him and know the actual story. And they won out. An unfortunate situation, but Greg's going to be better for it. Jones with the sack. A loss of seven yards. 
Uh, this defensive line has got to get going, in particular in the pressure department, because Annex did is a guy that was sacked five times last week, and that's their first sack today. Entering today, Ohio State was second in college football with 22 overall sacks, but they have not been able to get that pressure on Annex did. Remember, a lot of injuries up front. They're playing without their starting defensive end, Jonathan Cooper, a couple of those defensive tackles. Robert Lander, Landers and Draymond Jones have been banged up recently. They got to start getting to that quarterback and affecting the offense and their timing. Second down and 17. Annex dead delivers over the middle and it's caught for first down once again. Tyler Johnson is looking like an all-star. It's one route. They are throwing the exact same route every time they throw the football. It's Tyler Johnson from the slot on an in-breaking route. I would call it kind of a basic, maybe kind of a six route if you're in the di uh, digit system. Eight receptions, 119 yards. You've got to start playing and adjusting to the leverage needed to stop the inside route from the slot if you're Ohio State. First down to the 47. Is that just a post route, Joel? It's, it's, it's a mini post. It's, it's more of what I would call a basic because he's got to cross the face of that defender over his head. And they'll run it. Ibrahim flag on the play. As he's chopped down by Kendall Sheffield. I think they're going to get a hold on the center, Jared Weiler. Is that, that's what it looked like. Weiler just kind of tackled Devon Hamilton. And what are you seeing run blocking wise from Daniel Falele, the right tackle? Strength. Is he Honestly, moving yeah, too fast on the play? He's just a big, strong the offense. Holding. Offense, number 62. Penalties decline. Personal foul. Illegal block. Offense number 80. That 15-yard penalty would be enforced. First down. You know they needed that strength, and, and this young man Falele has done a really nice job. But right here, what you get the center is going to get a hold on the center, and then right there, here's where you got the illegal block below the waist. And engaged up top and down low as well, and he was outside of that tackle box, and then came inside of the tackle box to block low. And that's a rule that has been looked at and ultimately changed, and I think for the better in college football over the last couple of years. First down to 25 now for Minnesota. Back to him. And now that Ohio State defense starting to tighten up tough Borland, the middle linebacker who they say he can't run and he's not athletic he's just a great football player yeah i mean he, he's he's smart and he understands the game he's constantly in the right position he's actually a couple of times today he's he's gotten caught undisciplined with his eyes which is uncharacteristic for him but in this half he has played much better and been near the ball on almost every snap in particular in the run game 6 1 2 30. second and 24. This time he goes the other way, and Bateman with a great grab, an 18-yard gain, a shoestring tackle by Okuda may have saved a touchdown. Yeah, I, I think it does because Bateman, who is just a sensational freshman from for them, he's got some serious speed. Four-star recruit, they love him, and you can see why in just the tip of his shoe, they're able to get him down. Third down and seven at midfield for the Golden Gophers. Empty backfield for Anikstad. And a run it. Ibrahim. Oh, he cut it back, picked up the first down as Jordan Fuller with a saving tackle after a 21-yard gain. Again, that offensive line doing a great job. They left Chase Young unblocked on the outside. Great read by Anikstead, and then they got to mash down that defensive line, get a couple of seal blocks, and there he goes. Ibrahim just takes it right down the gut. This has been impressive from this guy. True, uh, redshirt freshman from Maryland, Muhammad Ibrahim is on a career pace today. 19 carries, 135 yards and two touchdowns. The 135 yards is a career high. First and 10 of the 30. And a timeout call by Minnesota. 20 to 14. Timeout, timeout. Minnesota. Third quarter. First of the half. To your 30 seconds. 
MLB postseason continues today with game two of the NLCS. Manny Machado leads the Dodgers as they face Christian Yelich and the Brewers game two today at 3.30 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Dodgers almost came back last night, but again, Kershaw giving up a big home run tonight. It'll be Ryu against Miley. That Brewers team, they just got some serious momentum. They come all the way back. They were, I believe it was four and a half back the first week of September to the Cubs. They ultimately caught them, ended up winning the division, took care of the Rockies in the National League Division Series. Tell you what, Milwaukee is rocking. They love the Brewers. In the Cream City, first and ten at the 30. They want to love the Gophers even more in Minneapolis, especially if they can pull this one out. Ibrahim again. Lowers his shoulder, picks up another first down. Wow, a gain of 12. Some smash mouth running by the Golden Gophers, and Ibrahim goes out. And a bad angle taken by Baron Browning. Browning comes all the way to the inside, gets himself caught in that mess, and Ibrahim takes it on the outside for a big game. 147 yards rushing a career high. First and 10 of the 18. Can the Gophers pay it off? Bryce Williams in now. He'll run it. And a whistle. No foul to play for a legal substitution. First down. I would just force Ohio State to stop the run because they have not been able to do it so far today. Minnesota is right up there about the six yards per carry range, and they've been doing a great job up front. First down to the 18. Williams gets through the hole. And has finally stopped around the 15-yard line after a four-yard pickup. But again, good movement out of that offensive line. Donnell Green, number 73, with a solid block. Just this defensive line, I get it. There's some injuries. You're playing with a lot of second-string players up front for Ohio State, but they are getting moved off the ball on a play-in and play-out basis right now. Second and six at the 14. Throw it up top and complete that one thrown high for Tyler Johnson. Talk about the way they've been able to run the football, though. When you look at the two tackles, you got Donnell Green at 6'7, 320. Falele, 6'9, 400. They've wanted to get bigger, they've wanted to get stronger up front, and you're seeing that come to fruition. This work that they put in, whether it's been in recruiting, in the weight room, in development, all of that has been coming to fruition. But right here, you get the sense that. This is going to be on the shoulders of Zach Anistead. It's probably going to be some sort of run pass option, maybe even. The question is, where's Tyler Johnson? Number six, he's in the slot. Top of your screen, third down and six. Anistead looking underneath that ball deflected at the line of scrimmage. Great job by Justin Hilliard to get a hand on it because Tyler Johnson was open. He was open, but here's the deal. Hilliard does a great job. He's going to get blocked, and then he just gets it. Well, see, he's down at the ground, and then he goes all the way from down, gets himself up into the air and into the passing lane, and they had a shot. They were actually using Tyler Johnson as a bit of a decoy, trying to bring in Rashad Bateman right behind him. It was a well-designed play, but a better play by Hilliard. So Emmett Carpenter... Comes in to attempt a 32-yarder. Got it up. And no good.
And he pushed it right. Well, now this offense has got to take advantage and capitalize on the mistake from Minnesota. And P.J. Fleck knows you got to put points on the board when you have a successful offensive series like they did there. Continuing to run the ball well, gaining yards, eating up the clock, keeping Dwayne Haskins on the sideline, but you got to pay it off with points. They were unable to do it. First down from the 20 for Haskins as he hands it off to Weber, and Weber backtracking. Looks like his face mask was grabbed. I don't know if the officials saw it. Cashman with the tackle. It is far too many whiffs up front. You've got to get yourself targeted. The first element of run blocking is getting yourself targeted, hat on a hat. Then you can drive, then you can win the line of scrimmage. And right now, Ohio State has been unable to do that on almost every play, whether it's pass or run. There is a free rusher from Minnesota. Loss of five, second and 15. Haskins looks backside, flag on the play. Here's the screen to Weber, and he's knocked down quickly by Cashman. And another huge mistake here from the offensive line. This time, Demetrius Knox, the right guard, is going to be called for holding. Holding. Offense. Number 78. Penalties decline. Third down. And this is just technique. He gets himself out of position and just yanks the defender down to the ground. Here's Knox at the right guard position. Watch this. He gets his legs straight, and then he just throws him down to the ground to try to get himself out. You can't that is just such an easy holding call, and it's all born out of the fact that he wasn't bending his legs and he wasn't using the proper technique. They decline the penalty to make it third and 13, and that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. And how about this, folks? We have a ball game in Columbus, the third-ranked team in the nation. The Ohio State Buckeyes are in a dog fight with P.J. Fleck and his Gophers. Coming up, the fourth quarter from Columbus, right after this. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Dave & Buster's Eat, Drink, Play, and Watch Sports. And we've got something to watch right now as we take a look at the scoring by quarters. This Minnesota team is playing so well, and really, they probably should be up in this game. Think about it. The turnover on the opening series, Gus, they had a turnover when they were driving, and that turned into points for Ohio State, then a missed field goal, and we're sitting here in a ball game in which they're only down by six, and, and it's, I think it's all been at the line of scrimmage. Defensive line's been winning against Ohio State's offensive line, and, and Minnesota has won the line of scrimmage on offense, running the football for nearly six yards a carry. Haskins faced with the third and 13 to the 17-yard line. Haskins off his back foot over the middle car. This time it's Austin Mack and a 17-yard gain first down Buckeyes. Yeah, and this game is, is falling squarely on the shoulders of Dwayne Haskins. They just are not playing all that great anywhere else. The offensive line's not playing that great. They're going to have to get the ball out quickly, and he's going to be have to be unfazed by the rush, which for the most part, that's been the case so far today. Dwayne Haskins, 25 of 34, 299, two touchdowns, no interceptions. All start. Offense, number 59. Five-yard penalty, first down. I'll tell you what, for a senior, and listen, in this college game, it's hard to sit up here and, and criticize these guys who aren't earning a living, but Isaiah Prince, as a senior, has got to play better. He has not had a great game. He's been beaten around the edge several times. That's where the pressure has generally come. That's a couple of different false starts, one of them at the end of the half. Now, after a big play right here. First down and 15, Weber. Looking for a hole. And Mike Weber wrestled down by Kamal Martin. The running game has been non-existent for Ohio State. 57 yards rushing. 2.5 yards per carry. Third down and 12. Haskins. He's going to win it. This time it's K.J. Hill. Out. Hill with a blocker, and he's finally upended by Antonio Chenault after a 21-yard gain. Boy, Hill, he is electric with that ball in his hands, and 
A big key there is also the accurate pass. You throw on time, you throw it accurately, and you give the wide receiver the best chance for success after the catch. K.J. Hill 7 now for 144, and that touchdown one-handed down the seam. First down and 10 at the 47. Haskins getting into a rhythm now. Drops back. Finds a wide open receiver, Luke Farrell. And the tight end gains 24. I love what Farrell is able to do here. Here Farrell is just going to come on the wheel and he's going to go right up that sideline as the other wide receivers clear out. There he goes right up the sideline. Perfect ball by Haskins. And you just allow the eyes of the quarterback and the route of the wide receivers to clear out the defense. And then you get in that vacated area. And Farrell did a great job of slow playing that and then getting the catch down the field. Haskins going over 300 yards passing now. 345, first and 10. At the Minnesota 23, Weber. And Weber. Taken down by Cashman and Jacob Huff with the pile drive. Yeah, Cashman. I love watching this guy play. He and Tough Borland. You know, Cashman's 6'2", 235 pounds. And he's a senior. He is a leader on this team. And with all the youth that Minnesota has, this is one of the youngest teams in the country. And with all this youth, it can be frustrating as a senior because you want to go out on a positive note. But you can tell this guy is just pulling those young guys along here today. Second and eight at the Minnesota 21 for Ohio State, up 20 to 14. Undefeated on the season. Third-ranked team in the nation. Haskins sprints out of the pocket, throws in a move, and it's caught Paris Campbell, first down Buckeyes. Ooh, they got fortunate there because the defensive back was closing fast and created an awfully tight window, and good thing Haskins put that just on the right shoulder of Paris Campbell because that's where it needed to be for the completion. Gain of nine, first down of 12. Again, underneath, Campbell looking, spinning, and finally goes down. Blake Cashman with the saving tackle. Ohio State moving and grooving now through the air. And I think they're going to have to keep it in the air because of the lack of success on the ground in particular. Now, it's the most difficult spot to run the football is inside the 10-yard line because all the defensive backs and safeties are up near the line of scrimmage. You cannot block everybody in there. you got to have a dominant offensive line, so look for them to get into that pass game again. Second and three. Campbell trying to get outside and will not. Great tackle by Keandre Thomas. The sophomore from Fort Smith, Arkansas, Northside High School. What a play. Thomas keeping that outside arm free. Watch Thomas. He's all the way on that left side of your screen. And watch how he keeps the outside arm free the whole time. Weber tries to block him. Weber quits his feet. Doesn't get a very dominant block there. And Keandre Thomas comes off, scrapes that block, and gets the ball carrier to the ground. That's a sensational job. A loss of four. Third and seven at the nine. Haskins steps into it incomplete. K.J. Hill, the intended receiver, but Thomas Barber was in coverage for Minnesota. Boy, Barber, so impressive at 235 pounds to stay with K.J. Hill. We've seen the quickness from Hill. And Thomas Barber not only stays with him, but watch as he lays out and he gets that arm in there. Might have had a chance to catch that ball, but clearly Barber doing a nice job to break that up. So Hobble comes in to attempt a 27-yarder, and it's good. 10-20 to play, fourth quarter, 23-14 Ohio State. And here come the Gophers on offense. Ball is sponsored by Discover Card, the official credit card of the Big Ten Conference. Got a ball game here in Columbus, 23-14. Ohio State leading Minnesota. Ohio State has not played their best game, but this man continues to play extremely well. Haskins, 357 yards, passing two touchdowns. Fifth 300-yard passing game this season. Second most in school history. Joe, you are a quarterback yourself. I know you love those kind of numbers. Yeah, man. Hey, listen, I'd love to play in that offense, but the, the only guy that's not happy about it is probably Urban Meyer, right? Because he wants to see that balance, but good thing he has Dwayne Haskins, because with the way that they're being unable
able to run the football, they've got to throw it, and they've got one of the best in the country and a guy making a legitimate run at the Heisman Trophy. And when we talked to Urban yesterday, you could tell that he was uncomfortable with his offense throwing the ball so much, and we'll talk more about that right after this. Minnesota. Gophers have lost two straight football games last week at home against Iowa, but they have played solid today. First and ten. Here's the reverse. And extend wide open. Watch out. Matt Morse finally upended inside Ohio State territory. A 41-yard gain. What a great play design. Morse was the right tight end, and he blocked forever as they had all that behind. Bryce Witham, excuse me, on number 85, Witham down the sideline, and Witham blocking that whole time. The junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, wide open on the double pass flea flicker. First down at 10 of the 34. Seth Green has come into the game at quarterback. Timeout, Minnesota. And the Gophers second will call the timeout. I'm going to go back to that play. Let's take a look from the coach's angle. Here's Witham, and Witham is just going to block, 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 and then he's going to get himself down the field and onto the outside. But watch how he slow plays it off the edge. Block, 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 block. Now he's down the field, and he's wide open. Got to do a great job of selling the initial run. You got Ibrahim over to Johnson, all the way back to Anikstead, and then they're down the field with a huge play from Minnesota, and P.J. Fleck is loving it. That's what you need, a little bit of a spark. Got a shot here in the fourth quarter. That's all you would want if you're Minnesota be close enough to make some noise late in the fourth quarter and they're certainly in that position now first down and 10 at the Ohio State 34 for Minnesota and it's that delivers throwing the ball. He telegraphs it. Pryor reads his eyes and gets the pick. The ruin on the field is an interception at the two-yard line. It'll be first and ten for Ohio State at the two. So we'll stay right here. Anikstead was staring to that side the whole time. And all you got to do, now on that play, there was just one single safety in the middle of the field. And Pryor actually started on that left side, and he was trying to go back towards the middle. So if you're a quarterback, you just take that safety and take him where he wants to go. What you got to do is you got to lay your eyes out here in the middle of the field. And what's that's going to allow to do? See Pryor, he's going over to the right side. Just take him further over to that right side. But since he didn't get all the way to the middle, he's got a lot less ground to cover on that go route on the outside. Got to credit Pryor. That's an excellent job going, playing the ball. The sophomore from Georgia was an overall play. top 100 recruit. His plays under further review. On the but in large in part due to the fact that Anikstead just didn't take him far enough over to the middle of the field. With his game. eyes. Yeah, it's, it's all about the eyes. So it's a no-look pass. No, it's not no-look. You'll eventually get back to the wide receiver, but you've got to understand, you don't have to stare at the wide receiver the entire time he runs his route. He's going to be there. So I'm going to take the defender with my eyes, move him to the middle of the field until I'm ready to throw. Then I'm going to let my eyes be my guide back over there, and then I'm going to throw the ball. But you're creating space with your eyes, and that's what a young quarterback tends to have trouble with. And they're going to take a look to see exactly Looks like a catch to me for yeah, I think they're, they're looking about the spot exactly 
and where they're trying to spot that ball. Trying to see if he possessed it in the field of play or if the possession didn't happen until he was in the end zone, which would then result in a touchback. So when you talk about moving around guys with your eyes, I always think of Joe Montana. Yeah, I mean, they, those great quarterbacks in the NFL, they do it all the time. Really hard to tell by that look down the field, but got a credit prior because he gets all the way over there and makes a great up. See how he's not quite controlling the ball, and then maybe you could make an argument based on this look that he wasn't controlling it until he was in the end zone, but it's going to be awful hard. Remember, the ruling is that he controlled it on the two. This is the best look there. Boy, that's tough to tell. It's like his knee hit the goal line, Joel. Yeah, but it's a, it's it's not about the knee necessarily about as as much as it is the possession and when the control occurs. After further occurred. review, the ruling on the field stands. It's an interception. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line, first and ten. It's all about when the possession occurs, and then that's essentially where that progress is going to end. They say that it happens in the field of play, and yeah, I just didn't see anything on video there that would have overturned that and, and taken him into the end zone. So Pryor with the interception. That brings Haskins back on the field. He's thrown for 812 yards and eight touchdowns in the last two weeks. And they will run the ball with Dobbins, and he'll pick up a first down. Jacob Hoff stops him. And finally get some movement out of that right side. Isaiah Prince, number 59, who's had a tough day, got some great movement there, and that's what opened up the hole for Dobbins as you saw that shiftiness once he was at the second level. First down of the 12. Haskins. Caught over the middle. K.J. Hill. puts that ball on a rope. Yeah, and this is one of his favorite routes to throw. It's called the basic route. It's a dig route from the inside receiver. And a lot of times, strong arm quarterbacks love that route because they can just rip it across the middle. 15-yard gain. J.K. Dobbins trying to run it, but Thomas Barber, first man to him. No gain on the play. You know, they didn't really allow Minnesota to get set, and I think that that confused the offensive line. Minnesota was kind of walking around still, not set yet, and all of a sudden there was a free rusher into the backfield, and it was Kamal Martin, number 21, who did a great job getting him down at the ground. Second and 10 of the 27. Haskins, and he's sacked for the third time. Wow. Coming around the corner. Shot out of a cannon. Coughlin. Say Isaiah Prince cannot handle the speed of Coughlin. He's just going to be headed around the edge again, and he beats Isaiah Prince and gets to the quarterback, Dwayne Haskins, who didn't feel him coming from that front side. I tell you, even when he's not getting to Haskins, he's beating Prince around the edge every time. The speed rush of Coughlin has not been stopped today. That's a six-yard loss, third and 16 to the 21. Great chance for Minnesota here to get off the field. There he is again. Haskins. Throws on the move, batted down, incomplete, and a flag. Cashman bats it down. And let's see if this is a hold against Ohio State. Holding. Offense. Number 59. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Isaiah Prince again. I tell you, they are just working on Prince. And again, it's just the speed rush, and he gets set on the inside. You see how Coughlin gave that one little move inside? Prince stopped his feet right there. He gives that little inside move. Then he's getting around him, so all Prince can do is grab him. That's just poor footwork, and there's a lot of waist bending going on. You hear that term, right? That means that they're not bending at the knees being athletic. This Ohio State offensive line is struggling with their technique today. Chrisman will punt it away, standing at his own seven-yard line. Demetrius Douglas is the deep man. Second punt for Chrisman. Here's Douglas, makes the first man miss. Tries to get to the wall outside. Cuts it inside and goes down at the 45. And that will give Minnesota some good field position. Paris Campbell with the tackle on special teams. A 46-yard punt and a 12-yard return. 
7.20 to go in the fourth quarter. This one's not over. Ohio State leading. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. Well, something to look for, guys. Let's just see how this D-line responds right now because Coach Shiano was not happy with what he'd seen from them, saying, when are we going to start doing our jobs and not somebody else's? He called out Chase Young specifically, asking him if he heard him. Let's see how they respond here, guys. All right, thank you. First and 10 at the 45 for the Gophers. Annex down over the middle. Wide open receiver. Once again, it's Bryce Witham with a 21-yard pickup. I love what Witham is doing here because Witham is doing a great job being patient. Watch, he's going to go all the way down, blocking, faking that run, and then he's going to release right up the field, and he's wide open. And that's a couple of times now in the last two series where Witham has sold the run with the block, found himself wide open, and Enixted has found him. First down at the Ohio State 34. Enixted has to take care of the football. Incomplete. Tyler Johnson, the intended receiver. When you start to wonder with the, the fact that it's been methodical drives for Minnesota in a two-score game, you got to start thinking about the clock now, right? This is not Oklahoma. They're not a, a fast strike offense. So you got to start thinking about what's my drop dead point here where I need to get a score to have a chance and get another possession. You're looking at maybe the four-minute mark. So you've got another two and a half, 239 at game time that you're playing with here on this offensive series. And remember, three turnovers in the territory of Ohio State. Here's the option, Anikstad runs it himself. And Justin Hilliard brings him down after three-yard pickup. A nice read from Anikstad. He wanted to pitch that ball outside to his running back, but the defender was there, and he ended up gaining some positive yards and setting up a more manageable situation here for a third down. Third and seven. It's been all Tyler Johnson in big moments. The slot receiver for Minnesota on inside breaking routes. Johnson, eight catches, 119 yards. He's averaging 15 yards a grab. Number six. Anikstad underneath, broken up. Great job by Jeffrey Okuda. Bateman, the intended receiver. Bateman's running the slant. Gets a little bit of a step, but man, that's a great play by Okuda because he keeps that other arm, the right arm, off of Bateman, gets around him to bat the ball down. And now the biggest play of the game so far, the fourth down, as Minnesota will stay on the field in the two-possession game. Fourth down at seven of the 31. Urban Meyer says, let's go, fans. And they're going to need to take a timeout. They're going to run out of time on this play clock. It's now down to five, four. And this will be their last one of the game. Timeout. Minnesota. 5.52 to play in the fourth. Big play coming up in Columbus. J. Fleck has decided to kick the field goal. This is the correct decision. You don't want to put the game on the line on a fourth down right now. You need two possessions. Take the points. Carpenter has been good from 53 earlier this season. He did miss his last field goal attempt wide right earlier today. But I like this decision from P.J. Fleck. Take the points that you have potentially right now rather than put the game on the line with a fourth down. This one from 48 yards away. Emmett Carpenter. Missed that one badly. Greg Schiano's fired up. Defense held. He challenged them. They answered the bell. And P.J. Fleck, I'm sure he's second-guessing second himself, but I thought this was still the correct decision. You just got to have a guy go out there and hit it. I mean, that was not even close from Carpenter. And now it's both his field goals today, or his, at least his last two, missed well to the right. And Greg Schiano challenged that defensive line, and they showed up. Carpenter came into this game on a hot streak. He had hit. Here in Columbus, he was 8 of 9 coming into today. Mike Weber around the right side. 
Now that's three turnovers in Ohio State territory and two missed field goals from Minnesota in a 23-14 game on the road against the number three team in the country. P.J. Fleck wanted to get in here and make this a championship week. Jenny talked about it in the open. See what it feels like, tastes like, sounds like to go out there and play a championship caliber team. And they answered the bell and just made a few too many mistakes. Second and three at the 38. Weber first down. Remember, Minnesota has a freshman walk-on quarterback starting for them. He threw three interceptions last week, has had trouble today. Coach Fleck is in his second year. The thing about him is that he has great enthusiasm and energy. Even Coach Shiano said that when he hired him at Rutgers and then when he eventually hired him at Tampa Bay. Started slowly at Western Michigan and eventually turned it around in a big way with the Broncos. Weber dancing around. And then it gets close to midfield. Chenault with the tackle for 30 and counting. Ohio State's trying to run this clock out now inside of four and a half minutes and trying to lean on that offensive line that candidly has not played well today. They've rushed the ball 30 times for under two and a half yards, and Urban Meyer needs them now. This is where you need your offensive line. When the opponent knows you want to run it, you know you want to run it. Can you do it? That's the mark of championship middle up front. We'll see if the Buckeyes can answer the bell right now. Basket hands it off. Getting closer to the first down, two-yard gain on second and four, so they'll be faced with third and two. Now, if you decide to throw here, this is when, as a quarterback, if I'm Dwayne Haskins, you got to think aggressive, but you got to play conservative. This ball cannot go in a tight spot if they decide to throw. Haskins will throw it, rolls over the middle. First down for the Buckeyes, Luke Farrell. He found a soft spot and gains 13. Love that play call, because first you're going to get all that run action, and all the defenders have to react. They've got to stop the run. They've got to commit to the run. And then Haskins finds his man wide open, just like I said. Take the big window throw, and he does it at the second level, and he puts it right on the money. Excellent job from Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins, 32 of 43, 385 yards and two touchdowns, no picks. Here's the handoff. And Weber. Let's take a look at the road ahead for the Buckeyes, sponsored by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Well, they got to start hitting the road in three of their next fours on the road. They're going to go at Purdue. They come home to Nebraska at Michigan State at Maryland before the team up north comes down here to the shoe. And you would say, listen, they are clearly a team that can and probably should win all those games. But with the way that they played today, they've got probably more questions than answers going forward out of today's ball game against Minnesota. Haskins. See him pop right through that middle and then shoot, man. This is just a terrific ball. All over it. Haskins right down the middle. 30 to 14, Buckeyes. 2.15 to go. Dwayne Wade, different world for Ohio State. to 14. How about the gaudy numbers for Dwayne Haskins? 33 of 44. 412 yards. Three touchdowns. No interceptions. And he makes it look so easy and effortless. And, and for the most part, he did that today with a total lack of a running game and an offensive line that candidly was getting beat pretty bad in the pass rush, in particular, over at the right tackle position by Carter Coughlin. Let's go to Mike Hill for a game break.
All right, guys, Florida had his hands full against Vandy today. Down by as many as 18, but the Gators coming back. Jordan Scarlett with a 48-yard touchdown run, giving the Gators their first lead of the game in the third. It's now 34-24 in the fourth. Gus and Joel. Uh, you could sense a, a, maybe a letdown coming for Florida. They had back-to-back -back wins over ranked teams, Mississippi State and LSU. Obviously, the emotional game against LSU. The red zone defense has just been unbelievable. The recovered college football best 17, or excuse me, 11 fumbles, 17 takeaways on the year. So just a matter of time before they got rolling. Maybe similar to the, this game here today. It was just kind of a matter of time, but really it was all Haskins today. Buckeyes have scored the last 20 points, but you have to tip your hat to what P.J. Fleck has done with this team today. And you get the feeling, you give him some time, he's got a good shot at turning things around. I like his enthusiasm, his passion. With the youth of this team, you could see them making a potential run to compete for the division title here in the next two or three years. In particular, with all these freshmen they've got on the field. Second and seven of the 28. Annex step. And he'll go down behind the line of scrimmage. Gus, what's interesting from my point of view here is we go now inside of a minute 30 in this ball game. When you go to watch this film, if you're Minnesota and Ohio State, it's going to be a stark difference. In the Ohio State facility, they are going to focus intently on what they didn't do and what they did wrong. It's going to be teaching like you've never seen before. They're going to get all over these guys. For Minnesota, if I was P.J. Fleck, I would show them all the things they did right. Look, guys, we can do it. We can play with these guys. We can do it week in and week out. That's all we need to start working on. And that extend. Thrown over the middle for Pulse and flag on the play. Yeah, Baron Browning kind of holding there as Paulson was trying to release on one of those delay plays that we've seen them be successful with here in the fourth quarter. Pass interference. Defense. Number five. The ball be placed at the spot of the infraction. Automatic. First down. Because part of the deal is, is Ohio State is seeking perfection and execution and detail, and they're trying to go there. Part of what is going on at Minnesota is you've got to teach them belief. P.J. Fleck has got to understand that these kids have to learn how to win these games. So you, you show them the ways that they did do that and had the opportunity to do that. That's a fine line in coaching. Maddox Dad hands it off. And in order to win, you have to take care of the football. Three turnovers for Minnesota. That's yep. a big part of this game. Uh, two missed field goals as well. You know, and all three of those, Gus, all three of those turnovers were in Ohio State territory. One of the first possession, and Anikstad is going to have to get better from that because a couple of those were all on his eyes. And, and there's another one where he kind of stares down a wide receiver. You get to get up there and bat that ball down. <laughs> Stat 13 of 23, 218, two interceptions. He threw three last week. Remember, he's a true freshman. Third and one. And the Gophers will not pick up the first down. Ibrahim, but he has played extremely well mm, today. You're right. Ibrahim. 23 carries, 158 yards, and two touchdowns. 6.9 a pop. And that should be your ball game. Ohio State, they didn't play their best game. Nope. But Urban Meyer will take it. 30 to 14, P.J. Fleck over across the field, shakes Coach Meyer's hands. Good battle. Haskins, though, was the story. He's thrown for 867 yards and nine touchdowns in the last two weeks. Heisman Trophy candidate? No question about it. No question about it. Dwayne Haskins is playing as good as anybody out there. 30 to 14, the final. Ohio State, the third ranked team in the country, remains undefeated. The Minnesota Golden Gophers gave them a game. 
let's go downstairs to Jenny. All right, over, Irvin, well, you stay undefeated, and that's always the goal here. You talk about demanding excellence from this group, and Dwayne Haskins was the difference maker again today. What can you tell me about his performance and the way he's leading this offense? Well, we gave up a little pressure first time really all year, and that they have a very good pass rusher in that number 45, but uh, Dwayne's accurate, and once again, guys are making plays for him down the field. You reminded me at the break that you're dealing with plenty of injuries defensively, but they shut out the Gophers in the second. Were you pleased with the response? Yeah, uh, much better in the second half, and uh, we get some of these guys back next week, and we're going to need we're going to need them. What's the first thing you tell the guys when you hit the locker room? Uh, you enjoy the win, enjoy the win, and enhance your strengths and work on your weaknesses. All right, thank you, Urban. Thanks, guys. All right, Jenny, thank you very much. And let's take a look at our Buick expectation shattering drive. Yeah, sponsored by Buick here, Gus, and I got to tell you, man, it was the play of the game. Our man KJ Hill going one-handed back shoulder. And then he just reminds everybody that, yep, I caught that one-handed, and it is stuck. K.J. Hill. The final score here at Ohio Stadium, Minnesota 30, Ohio State 14. The Buckeyes improve to 7-0. Right now, let's go back to Los Angeles for more post-game coverage.